Get smart with your spending with Nusenda's Breeze debit card. We've got your back by offering safe and easy access to your money. Never any hidden fees, just an account that makes sense. Download the Nusenda app to enroll in mobile and internet banking, managing your funds, making person-to-person transfers, and rounding up purchases to save. Visit Nusenda.org to explore Breeze accounts and join our credit union. New members must be eligible for membership. Equal opportunity lender. Insured by NCUA. Good day, folks, and welcome to another edition of Inside Santa Fe Public Schools podcast. I am Joe Abeta. And before we get to our guest today, I'd like to thank our sponsor, the Usenda Credit Union thank them for supporting our podcast and supporting the community of Santa Fe and Santa Fe Public Schools. So again, thanks again, you send a podcast. With us today is a special guest, our Sustainability Program Director, and I say our, meaning Santa Fe Public Schools, Lucy Stannis. How are you doing today, Lucy? Great. Thanks for having me today, Joe. Yeah, no, thanks for thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Um, so it's funny because I think it was my first day we actually had a meeting on my first day of work. So it was kind of like all your group that you work with and stuff. And we kind of hit the ground running on some stuff. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was like, oh, I know what it was. It was on the uh, the talk that we had uh, a couple of weeks ago at Santa Fe High. But uh, you were one of my first meetings. So I uh, I appreciate that. That was kind of cool. I always remember that day. It was it was a very fast moving day. A lot of meetings and, and stuff like that and getting uh you know, getting my feet uh, on the ground, but, um, but today you're here and I wanted to ask you, and thanks for coming too, as well. Um, I want to ask you for the folks out there, what does a sustainability program director do? So every day is different. Uh, It keeps it interesting. Um, What we really focus on in sustainability is supporting every facet of the district in achieving environmental sustainability. Um, So a lot of it is is a supporting role um, and helping folks be successful with the initiatives that they want to implement. Mm -hmm. And then we work to sort of fill in those gaps of areas that we think we could really make some some great advancements towards sustainability. Okay. So what would be like an example, like an everyday example that folks could say, oh, that's sustainability. What would be an example that we do in the schools? It would be like that. But it would be something that you oversee that would people can relate to. Yeah. So uh, installing rain gardens, for example, is a project that we work on. We work on advancing solar energy within our district, Mm -hmm. district owned solar. Um, We look at water efficiency, energy efficiency, as well as conservation. Every day I check to see if we have any leaks across the district, um, water leaks specifically, and and see if we can address those. Pretty much we touch every facet of the organization in some way or another. No, I, it's, uh, and, and it's interesting. You brought up the, 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 is it the rain gardens or the water gardens? What would they be? Rain gardens? Rain gardens, rain, yes. It, so um, coming from the city and, and working in uh, water conservation for a little bit, I, uh, I, I know that, you know, uh, that rain catchment, right, is something that was huge, especially as far as, as bringing in like new buildings and stuff like that. Is that something that's like you think about when you're in the new design of the, of the buildings that we, that we do have that just came online? Yes. We just installed rain gardens at the new eco campus Mm -hmm. in the parking lot to make sure that all of the rainwater that comes off of that parking lot ends up in the median um, where they're able to support trees and plants without supplemental irrigation. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it provides some shade, provides some nature, um, but doesn't impact the water usage that we're seeing at the district. It's interesting, like in today's world, I, I mean, I know it's been a while, but it hasn't always been. I know me growing up, I'm a, and I'm much older than you are, um, you know, that it was just building a building and, you know, there's a couple of like streets and stuff like that, but now there's a whole science into putting the building up, right? Right. We have sustainable design standards at the district that our team adheres to. Anytime we build a new building or do a major renovation, we make sure that we are having a, a, the most energy efficient and water efficient building possible. Yeah. 
I, and and I and, you know and I mentioned our new buildings, uh, Santa Fe High, right? The new commons that we put up. Actually, yep. I would assume that those practices were put up for the whole front part of the new admin building in that area, right? Yes. For for Santa Fe High, and then Eco it being brand new, and then Ortiz right now that's going through renovations, correct? Right. We're doing some renovations on the HVAC system to upgrade it, make it more energy efficient, make it more a, a pleasant experience when we're having extreme heat. And then we're also doing LED light conversion at Ortiz. Okay. Uh, it seems like it's an ongoing thing, right? Yeah, every day. Like you just can't say, all right, we got all our to-do list done and now we can relax maybe for a couple of days, but it's not like that, right? Right. I, this is an ongoing process, um, us getting to a place where we're environmentally sustainable. Mm. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. It's not going to happen just with one project. It's something that we got to chip away at every single day and all of us in the district from the pre-K students all the way up to the superintendent. How... how um. So what would be the overall goal? Is it for every every building that the school owns that we oversee is a hundred not a hundred percent energy efficient, but the best ener energy efficiency that you could get, grade you can get? Is that what the goal, overall goal would be? Yeah, the goal is really what is our impact on the environment and trying to minimize that to mm -hmm. the greatest extent possible. Yeah. Eventually, you know, once we have one day got there, yeah. which is going to take a while. Yeah. How can we make a positive impact on the environment? Yeah. Um, looking at the landscaping and our grounds as um, a place for biodiversity, for pollinators, um, for a pollinator habitat, um, to make sure that we're not just minimizing that impact, but having also a positive impact on the environment. Has it gotten easier to do something like that? I, I, I mean, as far as like, you know, I mean, I would assume that it's first like a district cell, right? Hey, we got to do this, guys. And we got to do this because of this, where it seems like it would be more easier now. I think it's easier in our community okay. um, compared to a lot of other communities across the country. Mm -hmm. We have had one of the first programs um, for sustainability in mm -hmm. the country. And this program has been going on for almost 15 years. Okay. Um, so we're one of those leaders, yeah. which is really great. Yeah. And we're really fortunate to have the board supporting sustainability with a uh, a policy that mandates organizational sustainability, that it's the responsibility of every individual in our organization. I think we also have a really unique community that yeah. pushes us yeah. and um, wants and expects more yeah. for us, which is helpful for our efforts as well. It's, it's cool because then it becomes like, it's just one of those things like where a building has to have bathrooms and, and school, you know, classrooms and hallways and stuff. It also has to have these things too, as well. Right. Right. That are, that add to the efficient energy efficiency, sustainability uh, of the environment around it too. All that comes with it. Right. Right. And a lot of what we do is the boring stuff um, that people don't see. Right. It's making sure that our um, restrooms have fixtures that are water conscious. Mm -hmm. Our appliances in our kitchen are energy efficient. Mm -hmm. Um taking a look at our utility bills and identifying if we're having any issues um, and really scrubbing through the data that's coming in. So the things that don't necessarily make the headlines often make the difference. Yeah. Even coming down to policies and procedures, how we operate um, and making small changes to business as usual, that's what really makes the impact but doesn't quite make those headlines. No, I gotcha. I um so my first gig here in the city after I got out of college, I was I ran the um the toilet retrofit program here. Awesome. <laughs> in, at, at in Santa Fe, right? Yeah. And it was about we had to change out ten thousand toilets in in six months or three months or whatever. It was a temp job. And um and so I remember uh afterwards it kind of converted into the water conservation program or water retrofit program at the, at the city. So in order for you to build something, you had to offset your water use by going and changing out toilets. Anyway, it's, it's boring for the folks listening to us, but at the time, um, people would bring in places like restaurants, schools that use a lot of water, right? right? The rotating, you know, the bathrooms going in being constantly flushed, 
the urinals, the toilets, all that stuff. And there was a science to it also as well that the city came up with. So I get it. It's, it's something, it does make a difference when you do put a water efficient, uh, fixture in, mm-hmm. in the bathroom, especially in these high use, high traffic, uh, facilities. Right. Right. And big shout out to our maintenance staff, because it's not just installing those fixtures. It's going to fix them when there's an issue. Yeah. Sometimes those toilets running, that's where we're seeing the biggest yeah. spikes in yeah. water usage. Yep. Yep. And so I really give a huge shout out to them for being proactive and addressing issues that come up because that, that makes the difference. Yeah. No, definitely. Definitely. Well, that's, that's a, that's a a pretty big task. I must say, Lucy, as far as, as far as what your gig is and, and what you do, definitely. So I know next week we have a big week, right? In, uh, in energy efficiency, it's, there's national drive electric, it's natural drive electric week and also energy efficiency day. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about both? Yeah. So national drive electric week is celebrating, um, the, the electrification of our transportation system. And I'm really proud that many of our departments are taking on that charge. Um, Specifically, I want to shout out our transportation department who is converting many of our buses Mm -hmm. to electric school buses. We'll have eight by the end of this school year. Um, And we're really excited that it not only is impacting the environment and our carbon emissions, but it's helping reduce Um, air quality um, impacts for our students at our schools and across the community. And it's also has other impacts like um, reducing noise. They're really quiet. It helps with the behavior on the school buses. It's a lot of great, really great impacts um, for electrification. I also want to shout out our IT department who has taken the charge to electrify some of their vehicles that they take around town Um, They've switched over to four vans and installed four different chargers. And that's really helps to make that difference. So we'll have a total of eight uh, electric buses after this year. Yes. We'll be up to eight. Is there a over, is there a long-term plan to like have all of our fleet being electric? We're trying to get as many as we can. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a bumpy road. I'll be honest. There's a lot of challenges in electrification, uh, because this is sort of a new area for everyone. Yeah. So we're working on it, and we have one bus that's up and running right now. Okay. Um, that's serving several schools, including Sweeney, Ortiz, and Capital. Okay. We should have a couple more going online just in the next few weeks. Gotcha. But we're making that transition slowly. Yes, we is, are. Which is good, right? Yeah. That's good stuff. And then hopefully, I don't know, how many do we have in our fleet? Is IT the only one with electric? I know that we have a, a charging station out here at... Right. I think at, the uh, the mail delivery folks use an electric vehicle as okay. well. Okay. We have a couple of hybrid vehicles across mm-hmm. the district, Yeah, um, which is a solution in the right direction. Yeah. No, that's great. And a good example for our kids, too, that ride the bus. They could say, hey, I rode an electric bus. And I thought it was pretty cool. And I think I want to buy a car for myself. That's electric, right? Yeah. And I think what I would really like to hit home today is, um, transportation is almost 30% of emissions mm-hmm. for the country. Okay. And we want to reduce that as much as possible. Um, parent and family pick up and drop off during rush hour times accounts for a lot of those emissions. Yes. And so the more that we can get kids on the bus or walking, biking to school, the better for our planet, our community, but also the air quality around the school itself. Yeah. Yeah. And we did a spot. Right? Oh yeah. I saw it, it was amazing. Ride, go ride. Uh, was it? Uh, I'm sorry. Go, go green. green. Ride yellow. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that and that's part of the the safe routes to schools uh, program, right? That we have. Right. We're working to increase the number of walkers, bikers, skaters mm-hmm. um, that are going to school every day. So we have a walk to school program, walk and roll. We have twelve schools participating right now, and that's just a basically a big group of folks coming together as a community to walk to school. Um, at least once a week. Yeah. Um, so really, really love that. Really excited that that's a new program that we have this year. It seems like in our community, that'd be a perfect fit, right? Um, I know I, I would say probably the big reason why folks don't 
walk or ride is because it's just impatience, right? Like I just want to hurry up and drop them off and go on with my day, right? Well, I've been stuck in is, that pickup and drop off is, line. Is and, that right? <laughs> yeah, but that pickup and drop off line can be yeah. Can, it can take much longer um, to wait in that line than to walk home. Um, and also it gets our kids exercise. Mm-hmm. It gets their minds working so they're ready when they come into the classroom. Um, so there's a lot of benefits. And for parents, it gets their steps in. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Walk your dog while you're walking to school. That's right. That's right. Two things done at once. So, so with that, and we talk about this, is that you know, alternatives to not having to wait in that line because they are long in some cases at some longer at other schools than, than the others. That was kind of a double other, (laughs) but anyway, uh, it saves you time. It saves, helps out with the environment, right? The emissions keeps in the emissions down. Saves the help, the health of our kids. Yes. The stress. Yeah. Also of not having to do that. Right. Right. And so I think that that's, that's definitely something we need to push more. I know that you and I and uh, society are also working on the environmental side of that uh, go green, ride yellow campaign part, the video right. part two of that, that goes along with it. Cause so I think it's important too. yes, it, uh, from a user or a parent perspective, it does it all. It does save you some stress and stuff, but also it does good. There's a byproduct of, of, uh, you know, thinking of your kid's future and what kind of you want them to be in a blue sky, Santa Fe, fresh air environment or a, you know, an urban with a little bit of pollution in the morning that has to be wait to be burned off by the sun. Right. Right. Yeah. And I think it's hard sometimes living our lives, thinking through what can we do to protect the environment? Mm hmm. Getting on the bus or walking to school is a really, really easy way to make a positive impact um, without having to put too much thought into it, right? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. So so that's happening next week. That's a good time to maybe do a test, right, parents out there? Hey, why don't you try the bus for a week? I think we're fully staffed on our, on our bus, our bus drivers too, which yeah. is really good stuff. So there should be no excuses to not trying it out. Yeah, and check out you know, some of our new electric school buses that are coming on this year. That's right. And shout out to the IT department. Also, they have Wi-Fi on them as well. Oh, wow. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's great. Okay. So also, and I don't know if we've talked about this energy efficiency day on October 2nd. Right. What's that about? So that's about trying to make um, our buildings as energy efficient as possible through a lot of different measures. Um, I think I mentioned we have these sustainable design standards that our construction team has to adhere to. Mm -hmm. And that looks like all of our buildings, uh, new buildings and major renovations have LED lighting. They have water sense fixtures, Energy Star appliances. We're also working to put in geothermal heat pumps, um, which help with uh, energy efficiency. What, What do those do? So those are these underground systems that... Basically, it utilizes the temperature of the earth. Okay. Um, it the the soil stays a pretty consistent temperature mm-hmm. during the summer and in the winter, mm-hmm. and so it's it's kind of complicated, but it utilizes these mechanisms under the ground um, to bring our HVAC system to a consistent temperature without having to use the outside air. Oh wow! So if the outside air is you know. 40 degrees outside yeah, or it's 90 degrees outside, it's much easier to bring to temp that underground air or um, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that's a science there, but yeah. yes, that, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I wonder who figured that out. You know, there's a lot of new technology <laughs> coming on board. Right? It's it's hard to keep up with it. And yeah. that's why I think it takes all of us. Yeah. Um, I'm not a construction expert. Yeah. Um, and so I really rely on our construction team and yeah. everybody in the district to, to be researching their own best practices for sustainability as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot coming on board right now in terms of sustainability. And we're trying to leverage the newest technology that we can. That's awesome that we're on cutting edge yeah. like that here in the district for sure. We're also putting in underground cisterns um, to catch rainwater from the roof of new buildings so that we can utilize 
that water for our landscaping instead of having to use potable water. Yeah, with that monsoon, like where it just dumps just a bunch of water on us, like in a matter of 10 minutes sometimes, that's a lot of water that we can gain in just a short period of time, right? Right, and snowfall too. Yeah. So. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a lot of snow. Hopefully there'll be a lot of snow days. Yeah. That'd be nice, right? <laughs> okay, well, we're g- getting close to the end of our time, but I know you had, there's a couple other things you you had had brought up uh, on our, our, our prep before we had got on the podcast here. Um, what else do we got going on before we wrap up here? Yeah, we've got a million things happening at <laughs> okay. once over and at sustainability. And we can do this all in five minutes, right? <laughs> um, some key things I, I'd like to hit on. Um, we're, we're focusing a lot on solar development. Okay. So 25% of our school district right now is running on district-owned solar. Okay. Uh, we just put in a new solar array over at Aspen okay. as well as Milagro. So okay. really excited about that. That's really how we're going to make the difference um, in terms of mitigating climate change. And they're no joke. These are like serious yeah. arrays, right? Yeah, we have 2.5 megawatts That's, across the district. Okay. All right. So how much is that? Is that turning? Is that saving? Well, I guess if the schools are being powered completely on that or no? 25%. 25% of their total usage now. Of what we own. So that okay. doesn't even include. Oh, of what we own total. Yeah, that doesn't even include what you know, P and M is contributing okay. what we buy from them. That's okay. just our energy that gotcha. we own. Okay. Um, we also have a lot of, a lot of sites who are doing food waste collection with reunity resources okay. in their cafeterias. Um, all of our elementary schools, all of our community schools are set up and we're looking to, um, roll that out to some few additional schools. So what is that exactly? So in the cafeteria, when kids go to finish their lunch, Mm -hmm. if they have anything left over, Mm -hmm. you know, they're recycling items, but they're also putting anything like food related Mm -hmm. into the compost bin. Okay. Um, That goes over to Reunity Resources Farm and they turn that into compost. Okay. And then we're able to take some of that compost back from them. And incorporated into our school gardens across oh, that's the awesome. district. Okay, cool. So we'll be rolling that out to Nye very soon. Okay. Really excited about that All because right. the little ones can participate too. That's awesome. Teach them at a young age, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll be looking to expand to our middle schools as well. Do all elementary schools participate in that? All elementary, all K to eight schools. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, great. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah. And then we also really work with teachers a lot um, to help them with climate education, sustainability education, and outdoor learning. Um, so that's another area that that we really focus on. It's kind of a modern day earth science type of thing, right? It, I mean, it's something that I would learn back in the early days of, you know, an earth science class about, you know, the environment and sustainability at its very, very infancy, I think, back then. But now it can be just something that they learn right away and it'll stay with them the rest of their lives, right? Right. And incorporated into every lesson, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, in some way or another, reading, math, science, and social studies, we can all have, all can have sustainability and climate components to them. Yeah. That's awesome. That's great. Well, I want to thank you for thank joining you. us today. That went really quick. It did. Thank you so much (laughs) for having me. But thanks again. And just to remind everybody, next week is National Drive Electric Week. Give it a shot. I mean, if you already have an electric car, then I think that that's pretty cool. Then all you'd be doing is maybe saving some time and some stress of waiting in the line. But if you don't, give it a try. Walk uh, your kids to school. Have them ride the bus. Just give it a shot. See how it works out. Yeah. Take a small step. Um, All of us are on a journey for sustainability, myself included. It doesn't always have to look pretty, Yeah, but make that small step. Um, It makes the difference. Yes. And then also energy efficiency day on October 2nd. So you might want to try that. And I don't know, just do like little things that may conserve energy. Make sure all the lights are turned off in your house Uh, or not all, but the ones that you're not using. Um, you check know, your windows, check your wind. Yeah. Check, make your windows. sure they're closed. That's right. Um, maybe open, maybe open the windows instead of having the AC on, yeah. you know, something like that. So just, just be more aware that day of, of, of your energy that you use, that you're drawing from the grid, if you will. So 
Lucy, thanks again. Wanna, I appreciate it. I, I don't think this will be your last visit because you have so much going on and that we need to let the community know what you're doing, what the district's doing uh, for energy efficiency and for the environment here in our communities. Thanks again. Thank you. I look forward to coming back. Yes. No, thank you. And thank you folks for listening. This has been the Inside Santa Fe Public Schools podcast. Folks, have a great week. Have a safe week. Adios.